touch this pen. I saw this place. Some place amazing. And it felt like anything was possible. Welcome to the fan carpet. My name is Melanie Crossy, and we're here today at the Odeon in Leicester Square for the premiere of Tomorrowland, A World Beyond. Let's see if we can have a little chat with the stars of this epic movie. This uh, film looks at kind of the possibilities of creating a new world. If you could create a world for yourself and take anyone you wanted into it, who would it be? Oh, wow. Well, that's a very complicated question for us <laughs> on the line. I'll tell you who I take. And this is honest to God truth. And it's not just because he's here. Hugh Laurie, I take him with me. Because, you know, let me just say this. Lovely musician, so you know, and he's a fantastic cook. So I'd be covered in several ways. So I, I think you. Entertainment and food, all with you. I like it. Give it. <laughs> yeah. I would bring my three children, Ben, Lauren, and Nathan. Wow. Oh, my God. Any, well, I have, you know, I, this is, it's corny, but it's true. I'm going to bring my family first, my wife and my son. I don't want to, I don't want to leave them behind. Um, and, uh. God, I think I should probably bring along some chef or something like that. You want, like, Jamie Oliver. I want good food there. Uh, but I'll have to get back to you on the others. It's a, it's a daunting question. Well, Damon Lindelof and Jeff Jensen came up with this idea, and, and uh, it just really excited me because so many movies these days, you kind of know what's going to happen next, and with this movie, you absolutely do not know. And uh, that seemed like a fun thing to make. Well, it was Damon Lindelof, first and foremost. I, I said, a journalist for Entertainment Weekly, I wrote a lot about Lost. I, I recapped the show kind of obsessively, and so Damon knew me of my work, and he knew of my interests. So after Lost was over, and it came time for him to write Tomorrowland, um, he thought that I could bring something to the table in terms of ideas, in terms of research that could be really helpful to him, and that evolved into sort of story generation and, turn, and, and evolved further into writing. So that's how that began. I love um, Apocalypse. I love the Hunger Games. I love the Matrix movies. I love the Terminator films. But I sort of like, they always depress me because I don't want to live in that future where teenagers are killing each other, or robots are trying to kill me. I said, why aren't there any movies about a future that I would want to live in or aspire to? And, and is there a way to, to make that movie fun? And those were sort of the kind of the things rattling around in my brain late at night be before I conceived this stuff. Yeah, you know, um, from the start, we had two people in mind that ended up becoming dreams come true. Like, we had Brad Bird on the brain from the very beginning as sort of a director. And then we knew, in terms of, like, how Frank Walker, our, our, the character that George plays, as he was evolving, we only knew that there were a handful of actors that could play that role and really only one that we wanted, and it was George. And so, I mean, to luck out to be able to get our, you know, our top choice for a director and our top choice for a star, um, like, was just, like, pinch up. Like, we're on a roll here, so this is great. Well, he just kind of gets better with age, doesn't he? I mean, he's gorgeous, he's got that lovely voice. Um, he can play any kind of role he wants to, and he does loads of good humanitarian work when he's not work, you know, when he's not acting. Well, it's, a, it's, it's part of uh, the unpredictable nature of the film is using really wonderfully established veterans like George Clooney and Hugh Laurie and also brand new fresh faces like Fred Robertson and Raffi Cassidy. And uh, uh, between the two, uh, great things happen that you wouldn't see coming, and, and that's what this film is largely about. Well, I wanted to work with Brad, obviously, because he's just an incredibly talented guy. Uh, I love the idea of the optimism of the story. I thought it's nice that it's an apocalyptic, it's not an apocalyptic end of the world story of the end of the world. And I, and, and, I, 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 and, uh, and bro, Brit, fantastic. I mean, she's a star. She's wonderful. It was definitely always important to have um, a female representation in the movie. You know, when we started writing the script, um, there was actually multiple protagonists. And one of our creative realizations along the way is that we had to make, a, we, had, we had to, you know, only focus on a couple. And so we just chose the characters that were our favorite. And Casey, this dreamer who wants to be an astronaut living in a culture that no longer dreams her dream, that was our favorite story. And, and, and so when we decided to drive the story through her and we realized, what that, what that, now we just love her as a character, but what that could mean. 
terms of stories and bringing more female protagonists to screen, we're really excited about that. I would say we have two female protagonists in this movie, which is even more exciting. Wait till the world sees Rafi. I mean, she's awesome. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I think that when we were talking about the movie, I think a lot of the time, um, if you have a female hero, um, the, the belief is that there has to be some sort of romance involved. I'm like, Katniss Everdeen has enough to worry about. <laughs> yeah, without the romance. <laughs> that said, I love that stuff. Uh, our, our lead character, Casey, she has a, a romance with the future. She's scientific. She's brilliant. And um, it just always felt like it should be a young woman. I think the obvious one is Ocean's Eleven. Um, I love at the end when they finish the film and they're looking at Bellagio Fountains and Asheville's cannons playing and it's I, the movies that I like best are the ones that are rides, but that you think about them later. And so hopefully we've made that kind of movie. Well, I mean, in terms of technology, we're making leaps and bounds, and the stuff they can do is incredible to help people vote. I just went to see um, uh, Oppenheimer, and it was a, a movie about um, building a nuclear bomb, so it's just scary as technology improves for good reasons. People are taking it and using it for bad reasons. So, no. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's weird to do a place that's uh, uh, sort of a huge part of your imagination, but give it a tangible feel. And we went to Spain to this amazing complex designed by Calatrava to shoot it. So a lot of what you see in the frame is real, which is one of the things, one of the reasons it looks so convincing. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely proud to be a mass geek, and it's nice to go in and, and meet other girls and say, normal girls can enjoy these subjects, you haven't got to look a certain way or think a certain way, um, anyone can do it as long as you enjoy the subject, you haven't got to be Einstein either, as long as you enjoy it, um, it you know, you just, just keep at it and, and keep going, you haven't got to be the best in the world, you haven't got to invent something new every time you go to like, do it. the description it said 55 year old bitter guy so I was a little disappointed when he told me he wrote it for me with me and my it actually bothered me a lot and that's it for us today guys thank you for watching the fan carpet remember to follow us on Facebook Twitter and Instagram and also remember to check out hashtag acting hour every Wednesday between 1 and 2 p.m. wanted to see Tomorrowland, here it comes.